Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matt Reed. I'm going to call this um, meeting of the uh, Yellow Springs Board of Zoning Appeals into session. Uh, Judy, could you please call the roll? Yes. Reed. Here. Osterholm. Here. Salmonson. Here. Also present are Village Solicitor Chris Connard, Planning and Zoning Administrator Denise Swinger, Public Works Director Johnny Burns, and Village Manager Josue Salmaron will be facilitating the meeting. Thank you, Judy. Uh, we have uh, an agenda in front of us, um, uh, review of minutes, um, public hearing, uh, primarily. Um, does there anyone have anything to add or detract from this um, agenda? Um, if not, the uh, first item on our list is a review of minutes that um, Judy circulated earlier today. Um, did Tony, did you and uh, Scott, did you have a chance to review those? Yes, I approved them. Okay, Scott, do you have any comments or do you? I'll approve them now. I finally got to get a chance to read them. Okay. And I'm okay with the part that uh, I took place in. Um, I was only there for half the meeting. Um, so I guess, uh, do we have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make, I'll, the motion that. To I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Uh, yes, Chris. Uh, were some members of BZ, the current constitu currently constituted BZA not present for the minutes that are being adopted? Everyone was there. Okay, all right. I'm well, there is a question, Chris, I was only there for half of the meeting. Well, if that's the case, then the, the the motion would be to adopt the minutes rather than approve them because the minutes reflect the, the action and by adopting them, the person who wasn't there is not attesting to the accuracy of events that he or she did not observe. Um, so rather just, than approve, <laughs> it's adopt. Um, can I, I also had some amendments to it, which I gave to Judy, they were minor. They've uh, been made. Uh -huh. And, and I made them. Okay. They're non-substantive. So, okay, right. So, Matt, if you feel more comfortable that the motion should be adopt the minutes rather than approve because you were not there for part of the meeting, then I would suggest that we start the process over with that. Well, Chris, I wasn't even. I was. I wasn't going to vote, and just we were still have two votes, right? No, you'd have to vote, Matt. Okay. Okay. So let's just if 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 Tony, if you can change your motion to motion to adopt, adopt. then all three of you can vote. I make the motion to adopt the minutes as published with uh, the corrections Judy added. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thanks, Chris, for the clarification. Uh, the next item on our list is the public hearing uh, for um, Yellow Springs Home Inc, 1133 Xenia Avenue. Um, since we're doing this um, remotely, the, our normal process will be changed here a little bit, but it'll be very similar. Uh, how this goes typically is, um, is we hear from village staff and then have any questions for staff. Then we'll hear from the applicant and, uh, and see if there are any questions there directly for the applicant. Uh, then we'll open the public hearing. Uh, in this case, if you'd like to comment uh, during the public hearing, if you can either raise your hand on the video feature or uh, using the Zoom feature for raise your hand. Um, uh, and that will uh, put you in the queue and our uh, moderator will, um, will queue you up then and, um, and we'll go down that list. And then once those comments are all made, then we'll close that public hearing. Um, and then that'll, the matter will then return to uh, BZA. And, um, and if there's any further questions or comments, and then we'll have a vote. And, uh, and that's how we're gonna try to do this. Um, the pub open holy public hearing, like normal, if you can please keep your comments to two, two minutes or three, uh, that'd be um, helpful. Uh, and with that, 
Um, I guess I'd like to begin this public hearing. Uh, Denise, can we first hear from you? Sure. Uh, describe the, uh, the applicant, please. <clears throat> sure. Um, uh, February 11th, we held a planning commission meeting um, for a new pocket neighborhood development. And this is located at 1133 Xenia Avenue. Um, this pocket neighborhood development um, is uh, owned by Yellow Springs Home Inc. Um, at that meeting, there was um, some concern from the neighbors because of a um, designated a fire lane that was going to be on Woodrose Street and <clears throat> would not allow for any parking on the north side of Wood Woodrow Street. This was a concern to the neighbors that lived along that street um, because that they rely on that parking. Um, it's a congested area. Um, it's not a very wide street. So uh, one of the conditions was that uh, the planning commission uh, figure out a way or st with staff to meet with um, Yell Springs Home Inc. and try to come up with a resolution um, that the neighbors would um, be able to live with that would um, provide parking, right? The, what, what Home Inc. offered at the time was uh, five or six parking spaces within, within their existing, but they were already at the maximum level for their own uh, uh, units that are there, which is one and a half. Um, they had 12 units this was, and they had 18 parking spaces. So um, short, shortly after that, uh, the village uh, members uh, met staff um, along with Colin Altman, uh, who um, required the designated fire lane um, and uh, the civil engineer along with Home Inc. staff and met with, um, we all met together and we came up with a solution which would eliminate the designated fire lane on, north, uh, on the north side of Woodrow Street, allowing the residents there to park again by making the north side of the property, which has a, a driveway that, and, that goes there, um, 20 feet wide. And this would allow fire trucks to pull in, um, and be able to have fires if necessary along the housing that will be on the north side of that property as well as they as being able to pull in on Woodrow Street for houses that are along the south side of that property. So in order to do that, <clears throat> to move that, we uh, Home Inc. is requesting a nine foot variance, which would which would make the closest structure, the roof roof line edge of the structure. 11 feet from their property line and would allow us to go back to um, having Woodrow Street for parking. And that's my, that's it. Okay. Uh, Anthony or Scott, any questions for Denise? Nope. Uh, Tony is on mute. Oh. Tony's still on. Tony, can you start over? Tony, can you start over? You're on mute. Sorry, I talked too fast. Um, is, presently, is there a parking on both sides of Woodrow Street allowable? Yes, but it's um, part of it. Part of it has um, a rather large uh, driveway entrance for an apartment building. It's a very compact street. There's one house, there's an apartment building, and then there's another one or two houses at the back. And in, in the is it it looks and the, the view I have, the 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 parking slots are those for the apartment building? Yeah, so I, I have let me sh share it on my screen here. Let me share it with you. Um, So um, on the screen, <clears throat> if you can see here, originally um, the parking was going to be along here, uh, or, or the uh, fire lane was mm -hmm. going to be along here. This is Xenia Avenue. This is Woodrow Street. 
um, and the vehicles were going to pull in, park in the rear, and then go out onto Xenia Avenue. The new plan is that cars will enter on the north side of this property uh, and they will park in the rear and then they will exit Woodrow Street. Um, and the and people can still park along here. They're going to be expanding this out a little bit um, because they're going to be putting in some sidewalks and they will put curbs and gutters there. Um, so this this area will be expanded a bit. Uh, but Woodrow Street, by doing by changing that design, there won't be <clears throat> this two way traffic from the residents going on to Woodrow Street either. Thank so you. Denise, when they make those changes to Woodrow Street, how um, much wider is the street going to be and is how far from the property line will that curb be? Uh, I'm going to defer to Johnny. Um, he, he knows the width now and how, how if you want to ask him, he's here. Right, <clears throat> excuse me, right now the width is probably about, I'm going to say 35 feet, but the road width is actually 60 by the time it gets done. The new road will be 60? Yes. So you won't have a problem getting in there if there's cars parked on both sides of the street? No. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Denise? Nope. I guess I have one. So if we widen the street to 60 feet, which is almost double it, you'll have to move the fire lane? Well, the fire lane is going to be on the north side now. But if only it's 60 feet with parking on both sides, would that qualify as a, as a, as a fire lane? No, it, it, they can just pull in there as they would any other street. It wouldn't, they wouldn't, have, there, there'll be signage. Um, I believe um, the homie was instructed to put some signage up uh, on the north side driveway as well. But it only be some signage, and they wouldn't have to block it off and 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 disallow parking. Okay, thank you. Did you um, unless I'm misunderstanding, um, Anthony? Are you are you clear as to which street is now the fire lane? Uh, help me. It's so Denise, if you could pull up that uh, plan again and just show the change, because there's. There's one that shows you where the fire lane was, <clears throat> was and one that shows where it now will be, and that might be a little confusing. Uh, I need to be able to share again. It's disabled. Okay. So this driveway will be created. It'll be 20 feet wide, and this will allow the fire trucks to pull in if they needed to fight any fire on the, uh, for those dwellings, that by having a 20 foot wide, which originally was proposed as 12 feet, but by having 20 feet, that eliminates the need for a designated fire lane on the actual Woodrow Street. So this will be a private driveway, but it'll be 20 feet wide so, so fire trucks can pull in. And then if need be, they can also pull in on Woodrow Street and fight fires from that side as well without it being designated exclusively as a fire lane. Does that explain? Yeah, that, thank you, Judy. It makes it clear, but I just, if you're doubling this the street width, and I don't know the rules for a fire lane, there can't be any cars parked in a on the street if it's a fire lane? It won't be designated as a fire lane. So yes, the cars will now be able to park on the street. If they had not had the ability to get in on the north side of this uh, proposed development, they would have wanted to make sure that no cars parked on this side. Yeah, okay. Um, but because this is wide enough now for them to be able to fight fires from this direction. They, you know, they, they can pull in here, they can 
fight fires from from Xenia Avenue and they can pull in on Woodrow Street as well. Even if there are cars there, they they said they can get their their hoses to where they need to be because of what they're going to they're also going to be able to fight any fires from the other side. And and as I understand it from Colin Altman, this this is a change that is in the um, fire marshal state of Ohio code that has to, that if you don't have a, a 20 foot wide entrance to a development such as this, then you have to have a designated fire lane. But by having this, and this eliminates that requirement. Got it, I just have one more simple question. Who has a responsibility for paying for those two streets? Um, the developer. Both the widening of the street and the 20 and the fire lane. Yes. And when it's an improve, it's an improvement when, when, um, and we have that in our code that if there's a development that's, that's being, uh, made along an existing street, the developer is responsible for the improvements that need to be made. And, um, Johnny Burns has said that, you know, when they get a little bit further down the road, He's going to work with them on 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 doing that. Okay, thank you. I have one other question, Denise. Uh, with the road improvements on Woodrow, how many parking places would there be? My understanding is they've been able to uh, park about four or five cars, and that pr would probably remain the same. It doesn't change the the length of the road. It's only going to change the <coughs> width of the road. Which even, so even where the driveway is coming out of the development, there's not going to be a, a spot lost there. Johnny, can you answer that? I, I, for, for where the driveway is, it's pretty far back. Yeah. It, I don't think right now it's been an area where they, anyone has been able to park. You said there was a storm. You, take a, you would not take a parking place all the way up to the corner. There's a, I think we had to be 20 foot away from a stop sign to be able to put a parking place there. I mean, down on the other end, Johnny, on the uh, east end, where the driveway comes in. On the east end, you still, we got to be able to maintain their drive coming out, so we can't cram a parking place right up against it. I think their engineer will do a great job of making sure that we have the maximum parking, but being able to make sure that they can enter and leave uh, without any interruptions. Okay, thanks. Because the fire, the fire truck, if they go and they come around the buildings, there can't be a car parked right behind that exit because they got to be able to make that wide turn. Right. And the way it is now, um, they they can average four or five cars, and that would probably stay the same. It's not going to it's not going to increase probably the number of cars, um, but they won't lose all that. Which in the other which in the previous plan, they were going to lose their four or five cars parking on the north side of Woodrow Street. Yep. So I'm sorry to be so pedantic about it, but. So what I think is being asked is you're, you're putting in a driveway where there was previously no driveway, which means that a car cannot park there now, which logically would mean the loss of a parking spot. So to me, I, I'm understanding what Matt's saying as if you could previously park five cars, now you're down to maybe three or four because of the driveway. Is that the case? Do you have a way to? Judy, Johnny, Johnny, you can answer where the, that. Where the, where the exit is now, there's already an entrance into that property right there and nobody parks on it. So nothing's going to change on that side. Okay. And Johnny, isn't there beyond that further back even, isn't there a stormwater issue there too? The neighbors uh, claim that there was stormwater down into their yard, but I think that all get uh, taken care of when the curbs and all that get put in there. Thanks, Judy, for um, articulating my convoluted thinking there. I appreciate that. Uh, Denise, I guess one more question I have for you is, have you talked to Bob Baldwin and the other folks in the neighborhood 
I have. Since this agreement has been reached? Yes. I talked to him a couple of days ago. Um, he had concern. He was asking about the trees that are along the north side of Woodrow Street. Um, those are in the village right away, which will have to come out for this expansion of this area um, and uh, to put curb and gutter in, as well as sidewalks. And he was fine with that. He, I think his biggest issue was that they don't lose their parking spaces. And, and he also wanted um, another issue. He appreciated that there was going to be curb and gutter because he, he wanted to see a, de a delineation uh, between what is uh, Homings property and what is the street the right away area. Okay. Any more questions for Denise? Just one quick one. So that would be free parking being free meaning anybody can park in those slots. Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, if there's some more questions for Denise, um, we'll go to the applicant. Emily, do you have anything you want to add at this point? Yeah, so I'm Emily Seibel. I'm the executive director of Yellow Springs Home Inc. And I just wanted to say, I think that this represents a very strong collaborative effort, uh, really driven by Denise. I think she and Johnny, Judy, the village team did a really great job of um, listening to the neighbors at planning commission and then circling back to see how we can solve this problem together. And it was Denise's idea to, to move the fire lane. So I just wanna make sure you get credit for that, Denise, because it oh. was- fine it was you know it was, a, it was a group really decision and we had to get Colin on board and I was happy to hear that he could he didn't need to have to be able to come all the way around the building so and this is this is ending up you know with the as a cost increase but I think it's a really responsible one and so I'm I'm completely in favor and support of this and I guess I just want to make sure administratively that um the condition to have five of the parking spaces on the site available to the public would be replaced with this. Okay, I see yes, Judy uh, nodding. That was not yeah. something that we were thrilled about anyway, because yeah. <laughs> uh, we could see that becoming an issue for the police department. Right. Um, yes, so if by doing this and, and allowing the neighbors to park on the street, that would, mean that homing would that condition will be removed yeah i think that this just it it makes so much sense and um we have uh made several con uh, attempts to reach out to the neighbors um to just let them know the plans entertain their feedback um i did hear back from one of them but it was verbally so i i wasn't able to submit a letter or anything but i think people see that they're that we've solved the issue and pres i mean the big the big thing was ensuring fire safety, and then also having um, parking for the residents in a neighborhood where there was pre-existing inadequate parking. And so I think that we were able to solve both with this redesign. Okay, uh, any questions for Emily? Scott, Tony? I have none. All right, well, if that's the case, then we'll open the public comment period. Um, do we have anyone who is interested in commenting on this in this funky format that we're using? Um, host Flay, is that chat, it says six in the chat. I don't know. We do not have anyone from the public that has joined. Okay. I just saw six, so that could be some of us represented in the chat room. So there's a total of 12 participants. Mm -hmm. And uh, most, there's the village team, the village solicitor, and then there are all the participants from the applicant, that being Emily, Stephen, and Brittany. And the only other participant there is the channel participant, which is to broadcast the feed uh, to YouTube and Channel 5. Okay. 
So apparently there's a lot less interest in this now than there was during the planning commission meeting. I guess that says something about your solution. Yeah. Uh, I would make a, 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 this a suggestion as it relates to the public, public comment piece of this. In light of this is the first virtual meeting that we've had for BZA, um, I know that we discussed taking extra steps to make sure that the public had an opportunity to engage. And I think for purposes of the meeting, we might just want to get that into the meeting minutes. So um, I think in, to complete the process, I might suggest that maybe Emily could start on what Home Inc. did and then Denise could summarize what was done on the village by the village. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I also wanted to just mention that Stephen Butler, our civil engineer, is here. If you have any questions for him about the site plan or stormwater retention, any any questions, um, he's here to field and available. But um, we we took several steps. Um, we sent out two letters by mail asking. Uh, showing the old site plan and the new site plan and offering both us as well as uh, Denise as, um, you know, saying that we would really like their input on the proposed changes. Um, and then we followed up with phone calls and emails for those residents and neighbors that we had contact information for and made um, several attempts to just make ourselves available to the neighbors. Um, and we did have a public notice that went out to all of the uh, neighbors surrounding um, the property, as well as put an ad um, in the newspaper, <clears throat> Yale Springs newspaper, advertising that um, it was going to be broadcast on our cable station, as well as on our YouTube community access station, and then there that they could also join live through the Zoom platform, and we provided that link. Um, and then we said, if you don't have cable or online access, we gave a phone number for them to be able to call into during this Zoom meeting. Um, and then if they wanted to, they could also write or call either Judy Kintner or me and express their concerns or questions. And then Emily, in regard to the feedback that Home Inc. received, were there any uh, any of the neighbors who indicated they had any objections to the uh, revised site plan? No, we didn't receive any word of any kind of objection. We only received um, positive po positive reactions to the proposed Denise, changes. Denise, same question for you. Yes, actually, um, uh, the Yale Springs Home Inc. did reach out to me to find out if um, Kaneta Sanford asked if I had received anything at all, po uh, positive or negative. And I did share um, uh, Mr. Baldwin's questions and concerns and that he was happy um, with the alternative. I, I think that satisfies the requirement of the efforts that were made and that the, any community concerns were addressed. Uh, either by process or by uh, direct input. Thanks, Chris. Well, if that's the case, then let's uh, close the public comment portion of this um, this hearing and move forward with our deliberations, Scott and Tony. Um, if um, could I ask one more question? Sure. A bit out of place. What's the consequences of? Is there any consequences that we're not looking at if we grant the variance? Well, we have a number of items that we have to go through to evaluate the variance, but really the only thing we're hearing today is just the variance, the setback. There are a number of other conditions that have been placed on the approval, but that's not really part of what we're talking about today. Okay. We're kind of limited to just that one question. So moving it from 20 feet to nine feet, there's no we talked about the street, is there, which sounds very positive and everybody's for it. Is there any negative inputs by moving the street closer to the building? I guess that'd be a question for Johnny, maybe, uh, with respect to utilities. I, I am completely for this. There is no negative to moving it closer. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Anything else, Tony? No, sir. Scott? No, I'm good. I've seen the property. It is kind of tightly packed in there. So this new street 
with the widening, uh, that's a pretty common sense resolution to this. Okay, well, if that's the case, then let's uh, go through our standards. The Duncan standards, um, I guess there are eight of them. Um, and kind of use that maybe as a way to jog our thinking a little bit. Um, the first one is whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. Uh, personally, I mean, I, the property has not been developed. It's been sitting there for quite some time, but really this variance is not required for someone else to develop it in my mind. I don't know if Scott or Tony, you have any thoughts on that? No, the hardest thing is to figure out is how to answer the question. Whether, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return. I, I, I'd have to say yes. Yeah, so Judy, you want to just poll the oh, sorry. members as we go through these? Yeah, I'm, I would say if you, if you want to elicit comment, and then if there are no further comments, then I'll just roll call you. All right. That's, Scott, does that work? Scott, any comments? No, I'm good. Okay, Reed. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Thank you. Okay, number two is whether the variance is substantial. Any comments, Tony or Scott? No, com no comment. Nope. And I'm good. Okay. Reed. No. Salmonson. No. Osterholm. No. Thank you. Number three is the essential character of the neighborhood. Would this essential character of the neighborhood be substantially altered or whether adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance? Now, um, Denise's comment here also is that without this variance, the adjoining properties along Woodrow Street would lose four to five on-street parking places due to the requirements of the designated fire. Okay, Tony or Scott, any comment? So that question that actually can mean positive or negative, either way, right? Right. And obviously this development is going to change the neighborhood, but. The, 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 but it actually is focused, the question focuses on the negative, not a positive. It's is that right? Okay. Substantial detriment, that's the only concern. Okay. And even though the neighborhood is going to change because of this development, it's the question of the variance only that we need to consider. Any discussion? I, I think it's important to note that you're still 11 feet away. So it's not even a 50%. Um, it's not over 50% on the variance itself, which might have made it more substantial. No, I'm, I'm good to proceed. Okay. okay. All right, Reed. Hang on here. I got to make sure I get Chris's <laughs> determination correct. So is there a is there a substantial detriment that would change or alter the essential character of the neighborhood? Is the change bad for the neighborhood? Is like how I interpret that. I, I said the change is good for the neighborhood. That, that, that would mean that the answer is uh, no. No. All right. Salmonson. Yes. Okay. Osterholm. No. Thank you. Number four, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services, such as water distribution, sanitary sewer collection, electrical distribution, stormwater collection, or refuse collection. Uh, we have a letter from the fire chief. We have the public works director on with us, and I think he's okay with it. So um, um, any comments or questions? No, sir. Nope. Judy? Okay. Okay. Reed? No. Salmonson? No. 
Osterholm. No. Thank you. Number five, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. Emily? <laughs> um, um, I, I, we understood what zoning jurisdiction it was in. Uh, when we bought the property, there were not pocket neighborhood zoning regulations yet. Um, and we also uh, had to determine whether or not Woodrow was a street and if what kind of street it was, which then informs the setback. So you could argue either way. <laughs> right. Okay. Tony or Scott? Nothing. No, I got nothing. I'm like Emily. I've, I've looked at that place for a while. I didn't even know it was a street. I just thought it was the entrance way to an apartment complex. <laughs> Judy? All right. Salmonson. Yes. Osterholm. Uh, no, because only negative. Reed. I'll say no. Okay. Thank you. Number six, whether the property owner's predicament feasible, feasibly can be obviated through some method other than the variance. I mean, I think this was pretty easy. You can not do anything. You're meeting the requirements and we're losing the parking, so. The, uh, the question I have is the setbacks and whether there's other design changes that can be made. But I mean, I think we're pretty far down this road, so. Uh, Tony or Scott? Nothing. Not gonna. Judy? Okay, all right, Osterholm? No. Salmonson? I gotta read it again. That surprised me. He said that. Yes. Read. I'll say no. Okay. Thank you. Number seven. Whether the existing conditions from which the variance is being sought were self-created. Tony or Scott? Self-created by who? Home Inc. The applicant. Thank you. That's all, that was my question. I don't know, I kind of go with what Emily said on that one, you go either way. <laughs> well, I mean, if you did nothing, you wouldn't need the variance. Right, well, a lot, a lot of these things are always, it doesn't mean it's like they do it on purpose or they're trying to rub it in our faces, but right. it probably is self-inflicted, but like, it was like she said, there was also none of this stuff uh, uh, the coding wasn't quite there yet or something right okay anything else all right judy reed yes salmonson yes osterholm yes okay and then last whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. It's the catch all. Any comments, Tony or Scott? No, sir. No, I'm okay. good. Okay. Um, Judy? All right, Osterholm. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Reed. Yes. All right, Scott and Tony, based upon our conversations and the application and word from staff, do we have any other questions for anyone? I do not. Nope, I do not. Any need for further discussion? No, sir. Not on my end. Okay. Well, if that is the case, would one of you guys like to make a motion as to what we should do? I make a motion we accept the variance as written. I second it. 
Judy, any further discussion before I have Judy call the roll? Judy? Okay. Osterholm? Yes. Salmonson? Yes. Reed? Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. Any objection to word? Motion to accept the variance to approve the variance request for the minutes because you're approving the variance rather than accepting a technical distinction, but it will be more clear in the minutes once it's approved the variance request. It's the lawyer in me. Wait, I, I'm not following you. Well, because it's a request to approve a variance. So Tony needs to say a uh, motion to approve the variance specifically. I thought. Tony, I thought you said to move the variance, approve the variance as requested. No, he said accept. I said accept. Yeah, well, I just want to say Okay. Accept. So I may, I correct my words, change accept to approve. Let's just roll call it again for extreme clarity. So can I get the second on that? Tony. I second that. Very good. All right, and I'll roll call the motion to approve the variance as requested. Osterholm. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Reed. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, for that little <laughs> nugget. I'm here for. <laughs> uh, with that, we have no more items on our agenda. Uh, make a mo someone want to make a motion that we adjourn? I make the motion to adjourn this meeting, though I do have a question for Judy before it's over or be after it's over. Okay, I second it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, everybody. You know now you have you have participated in the first virtual BZA meeting in the history of Yellow Springs. <laughs> the date, and hopefully the last. <laughs> so. Are we going to erect a statue of a laptop out in the yard at the Bryan Center for this? <laughs> Congratulations, homemaker, and everybody have a great day. Thank you. Y'all too. I'm going for a bike ride. <laughs> Judy, my only question was about a month ago, you sent a letter out saying there was like three or four of these meetings coming up. Is that still true? Yeah, I'm mute, Judy. Sorry, I was muted. Um, yes, there were other hearings that, that were up, but the, the only, pr in order to hold a virtual meeting, it needed to be an emergency. And none of those hearings qualified as emergencies. So we'll be, so, we'll be hearing from you after this hullabaloo is less restrictive. You will, and, and the way that council's headed is that we will be back to live meetings probably in June, set up in the gym with ample spacing between participants and markings for uh, those who come in to participate. So that's the thinking starting with June and moving forward. So we should be able to go to a reasonably normal seeming meeting at that point. And then yes, we'll set up a PZA meeting for June. Thank you. And you'll bring the megaphones. <laughs> thank you, Matt, for chairing. Yeah, You're thank welcome. you all for <laughs> and thank you everyone. Okay. Thanks. Have Bye. a nice day. You too.